And we are going to start our event more formally. Um, I am happy to welcome Lindsay Hates actually back to the research park. She's spoken on um, various different topics over the years as she is um, uh, one of those people who has lots of tools in her toolbox, so to speak, um, and a, a well varied background. Um, and I think that this is a topic that um, whether or not we do lots of presentations or things like that, I think we're always asked to present at some point um, in our careers, whether that's to internal or external audiences. So I think to, is a very relevant um, topic and we are very happy to have her here. Uh, Lindsay's worked for many years and partnered with us for things um, at DRS, uh, the, the uh, not DRS, sorry, DRES. I was working on another project that's related to DRS. So DRS would be the Division of Research Safety, not to be confused with DRES, which is, somebody fill this in for me. It's uh, the Division of Rehabilitation and Educational Services. Yes, there we go. So very different, but of course in the university alphabet soup, we uh, sometimes get these things mixed up. But um, Lindsay's actually transitioning out of that role um, and maybe she'll tell us a little bit about what she's moving forward to um, in this presentation. But as I mentioned, um, she uh, has a lot to offer from her background as we transition today's event. So again, remember, reminder, if you're just joining us, we'd love to have you um, post some connect or networking information in the chat, but also maybe something that you'd like to get out of today's workshop. Thanks, Lindsay, I'll toss it over to you. Thanks, Laura. And then I actually said the acronym wrong too. It's Disability Resources and Educational Services. So yeah, I know where I've worked for the last two years. Um, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so like I said in the chat, it's hard to do improv by yourself. That's more of a monologue. So I would love if you guys can um, turn your cameras on and plan to interact in a little bit. That would be really helpful to me. Um, and I would love to know what you would like to get out of today. So just thinking like, you know, public speaking is very stressful for most of us. So like, if you're thinking about what makes you nervous or what would you like to be better at, I would love to know um, so I can really try to touch on those things. Um, so like Laura said, um, I worked at U of I in a career coaching capacity, um, and now I'm transitioning to private practice. So I'm a licensed therapist and life coach, and then I also love improv. So this, um, collaboration, I guess, was born from my love of all of these things, um, so I'm hoping today that we can really learn some skills to help improve our performance um, under stress. And I think improv is a great way to learn how to pivot in real time. Um, Cause as you all know, um, when you're given a presentation, you can be prepared for most everything and inevitably someone will ask you a question that's unexpected. So. Um, I'm hoping to help us all get more comfortable being uncomfortable when that, that happens. Um, and then also learn how to improve our listening skills and communication, which we can use all the time. Um, I'm seeing more faces come on the screen. So thank you so much for turning your cameras on. Um, everything that we're going to talk about today is an evidence-based practice. And so it's backed up by science. I'm distilling a lot of information and simplifying things so that we can do this in an hour and get to also play some improv games. But I just want you to know if you do want more info about like why this works and the science behind it, um, I'll drop my contact info in the chat as we go along. Um, so I'm hoping today that we can all develop a better awareness of our stress response and what happens to us under stress and 
so that we can learn some ways to self-regulate um, to help us, you know, be able to perform better under stress. So, um, so what gets in the way for you guys? I would love to hear from you, like, what keeps you from really feeling like you're performing the way that you want to under stress? And that could be like an informal meeting or a presentation or anything, an interview. That's a really good scenario as well that um, many of us have gone through. So I would like to hear from you, like what do you feel like impacts you? I think I'll just go real quick. I think you nailed it. I think uh, interviews are super stressful for me personally, because I always, I guess, doing events, a lot of copy is pre-scripted. So then when I'm in a situation or people are asking me questions that I have to come up with, or I haven't thought about certain perspectives, I feel unprepared. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you, Kathy, for being our first brave soul to speak. Uh, anybody else? And Beth, I appreciate you writing in the chat, getting dis distracted by your desire to measure your words and thoughts in real time. I think we can all relate to both what Kathy and Beth said. Anyone else want to share? Yeah. Um, just moving off of what uh, I think that was that said, I was basically thinking just being here in the moment and just making sure like I'm still focused. And I realized that over like the past year when we had Zoom classes, it was hard to like stay focused in that realm when you're not in person. So that's what I, one thing that is just being here in the moment. That's one thing I like to work on. And that could be applicable to interviews also. So that's one thing I'd like to learn more or get out of today. Yes, thank you so much. And how do you pronounce your name? I want to make sure I say it right. Uh, Ade. Yes, Ade. Ade. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, exact, exactly. I think um, really understanding that we're not training focus, we're training refocus. So we are going to constantly get distracted and have to practice bringing our mind back into the present moment. So we're going to talk about that um, as well. Anything else before we jump ahead? I think for me with like things being virtual or like mass coverings, it's hard for me to measure like feedback while I'm presenting yeah. or like over Zoom, like an interview, like it's hard to measure or like a presentation is hard to measure like how I'm doing if like all the cameras are off and um, just getting that direct feedback as I'm speaking in the moment is important to me. Yes, that's super, that's been super challenging. And I, that's why I really appreciate, the, you know, some of you turning your cameras on because I have done presentations where it's, it feel like I'm talking to myself and, you know, not really getting any of that body language or feedback. So yes, absolutely. Anyone else? Okay, so, um, First, I want to just define stress for us, which um, stress is any demand for change. And it can be um, mental, physical, or emotional, any demand for change. Um, so we've all faced a lot of demands for change over COVID, if you think about how much like the world has changed. And I also want to say that these demands can be both internal and external. So I think most of us think about stress as an external demand that maybe, you know, your boss gives you more work or like something external happens. But the majority of the demands come from an internal place, like the pressure that we put on ourselves. So I think it's important to acknowledge that um, you're becoming aware of like what external demands are out there, but then what are the internal demands or pressure that we put on ourselves? And um, those are usually the stronger ones. So that's where, um, you know, like Kathy was saying with the interviews, like, you know, the question is 
kind of a demand for change, but then, you know, what you're used to, uh, I'm used to being scripted. And so now I have all this like self-talk and inner dialogue of, of what, what I need to say and what I'm used to doing. And all of that is coming from like that internal place. So I think being aware that both of those things exist. And the other thing about stress is that, you know, it's not going to go away. Like we can't, we don't really want to live our lives just getting good at managing stress and like taking things off of our plate. Like that's not really um, sustainable. You know, we all want to um, contribute to society and find a purpose and like be involved in things. So it's really um, more effective to learn how to manage and self-regulate during stress than it is to really try to avoid stress, if that makes sense. And I just also wanna say, I'm not talking about like toxic environments or anything like that, like where it's like, you do need to get out of that situation. I'm just talking about like the day-to-day -day stressors and things that like we all face. So um, that being said, I'm just gonna do a brief overview of the nervous system, because that's really what um, we're talking about when we are impacted by stress. And then we'll get into like practicing and doing some fun improv games. So um, we all have an autonomic nervous system, which really is what switches on when we face a demand for change. We get energy in order to face that demand. So um, the autonomic nervous system has two branches, the parasympathetic, which is like the brakes branch, and the sympathetic, which is the gas. So um, that's just a really simple overview, but I want you to know that everything we're talking about today, like why it works, it's because it helps us regulate our nervous system. So if we are regulated in theory, we're supposed to you know, face a demand for change, get some gas and energy in order to like meet that demand and then get access to the breaks where we can like rest and digest. So normally though, we usually get stuck with either the gas on where we just feel like we're going, going, going or the breaks where we just feel like we are overwhelmed and almost in that freeze mode, you know, where we can't do anything. We all experience like both of those things from time to time. So um, when you do um, face a demand for change or stress, usually um, there's a primary reaction. So either your mind is going and you have like a lot of thoughts and you start kind of thinking about different storylines or making up things that you think people could be thinking about you and all of that kind of thing, or you have a body response. That's where it's like maybe you, your heart's beating fast and you're distracted by like the physiological symptoms you're having. You could, you know, have like a stomach ache or things like that. So I would like you to think about and reflect like, what do you feel like your primary stress responses? Is it in your mind or your body? Yeah, thank you. Emily put in the chat, um, sticking to a planned schedule and stressed when events and meetings run over are late. Yeah, that's a really good one. So um, if you're comfortable, you know, putting your stress response like in the chat, I think it'd be great to just have some acknowledgement. Like I um, primarily have a mental response. So when I'm, you know, faced with a stressor, it could even just be like an email, like my mind will just start going, going and thinking. Um, anyone else have thoughts or questions or want to share what they feel like theirs is? I'll share again. Um, I think mine is mental. I spend a lot of time writing. I'm like, even though I do events, I am very introverted and I like writing. So again, I'm always carefully choosing words and um, like right now it's like, okay, you know, I, when you speak, you don't get to go back and edit what you say or change, yeah. oh, I could use a better word or whatever. So I think with me, I struggle with reprogramming how I think and not overthinking, well, what words would be 
best, like just speak how you feel and, you know, get it out there and not be so worried about, you know, the perfect way to phrase something. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Kathy. And then we have um, a couple more mind people in the chat. Um, any primary uh, body people that want to share? Um, we all have both. So it's, it's not um, a negative either way. It's just becoming aware of what happens to you so that you can better learn to self-regulate. Um, I definitely react like in a more physical way. Whenever I have a presentation or something and it's not going exactly as planned, my face will get super red and I'll start fidgeting. So it's really obvious. Yes, thank you. That's a really great, that's great awareness of what happens to you. I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. We've got, we got some people that turn red. So yeah, that's definitely a, a primary body response. So I think the first thing is, um, that you guys are aware of what's happening, which is really important. So then you can better self-regulate. So um, the two tools that we're gonna talk about today, there's a lot of options, but I'm trying to be brief so that we can like get through some stuff in an hour, but also give you practical things that you can start doing today. So um, the nice thing is whether you are a mind person or a body person, what you need to do to self-regulate is really the same. So it can work for all of us, which is, I think is really nice. So if you have an object nearby, like I have a, a squishy stress ball, but if you have anything that you can hold, I want you to grab, grab something. It could be um, like have my, you know, headphone case, anything a pen, just pick something up that's nearby and kind of let me know when you have it. Great, I'm seeing a pen. Okay, cool, seeing wallet, perfect. All right, so this is another ball, great. A contact point, okay? So, when we are under stress, our bodies rise. You've probably felt that. And what we're trying to do is to find safety physically. So while we're doing improv, and this also works in a presentation, if you have like a clicker or a pen, like you can use this as a contact point. When you do feel nervous, like, or that stress come on, you really want to just direct all of your energy into this contact point and focus on that. And that will bring your body into the moment. So um, we will never think our way through stress. We have to get in touch with the body and it really has to do with self-regulating that nervous system. So that's why it works. So a contact point is a great way to do it. If you didn't have anything physically or you couldn't like touch or hold something, your body's always touching something like whether it's the chair that you're sitting on, your feet on the floor. So you really just wanna focus on, okay, I'm gonna feel my legs being supported by the chair, or I'm gonna feel my feet on the floor. And you're just gonna kind of retrain yourself to like get in touch with that um, all throughout your presentation or a meeting or whatever you're doing. Um, it's a good way to really just get in touch in the moment and it will let your body feel safe and that will help you regulate your nervous system. So then um, the other simple tool that I wanna teach you guys today is um, basically a breathing technique. Now these can get really complicated, but the thing I like to remember is just that your exhale needs to be longer than your inhale. So that's another way where your body is going to perceive safety. So you can do that in a really discreet way in a meeting. You know, it doesn't have to be really dramatic inhale, exhale, but it's like, okay, I'm gonna breathe in for two and exhale for four. And just thinking about my exhale being longer than my inhale is another way to regulate your nervous system. 
have any of you tried tried anything else or tried these things and found anything that's worked for you? I find I have to do the breathing exercise more often with my kids <laughs> than with work. So, um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Do we have any questions or feedback on any of that so far? Okay, so keeping keeping your contact point nearby, we're gonna like transition to talk about improv a little bit and then we're gonna put these things together, okay? So um, has anyone ever done any improv before? Okay, fun. Um, so why does improv go with what we're talking about? Like, why are we using improv? Um, but, my favorite thing to think about is that all of life is unscripted. So if you really think about it, you are already doing improv when you go to the grocery store and you run into someone that you didn't expect to see. Like when you go and have a one-on-one -on -one with your boss or a colleague, like we're not sitting there with scripts where I, I know I'm my line then you're going to say your line, like it's all unscripted. So you're already doing this. Um, so you're just becoming aware of that is going to help you get better at all the conversations and all the relationships in your life. Um, and it really sets up a safe space where we can like practice these tools of self-regulating and just practice pausing and being in the moment. Um, and the great thing about improv is that no matter what you say, it's going to be the right thing because we're gonna make it the right thing. We're gonna agree with you. So um, it's a really like fun way to take risks and be creative because you know that whoever you're playing with is going to support you and is going to be like, that is the most amazing thing that I've ever heard, you know? And it, so it really helps you feel comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, so the basic, improv principles that we're going to use today um, is agree and add. So you've probably heard yes and that's the idea behind improv, which is just like no matter what you say, I'm going to agree with you and then I'm going to add a little bit from myself. And then I think the biggest misconception is that we're trying to be funny. So we're not trying to be funny at all. You're just trying to respond with what's given to you, respond genuinely. And the funny things come out of the relationship that you build with whoever you're playing with. So you don't need to try to be funny at all. Just respond um, with what is given to you. And you'll see what I mean. Um, it really helps with listening because you pay attention to what someone else is saying which we really should do this in real life, but like, you know, in an improv game, we feel like, okay, I really need to be listening and paying attention. And it really can show you um, how much you're not really doing that in real life. So it can help you with your relationships in that way. Then the last thing is to pause. So it's okay to take a moment, like you don't have to respond quickly if you're thinking and you're going to be nervous. Um, so one of um, my teachers at Second City said, why would we go fast if we don't know where we're going? And so that's one thing I always like keep in mind with the improv. Okay, so anyone have thoughts or questions about that? I'm really excited that we had like 15 people show up to do improv. That's really fun. So thank you guys for, for coming. Okay, so we're gonna just play uh, a game and it's called categories. So what is a thing that you guys think we could list off like, 10 to 20 of like it could be like uh things you eat for breakfast or types of cars or okay favorite foods perfect beth put that in the chat thank you things that are blue i love both of those 
but let's start with favorite foods. So favorite musicians, perfect. You guys are already good at this. Um, all right, so we're gonna go with favorite foods. So we are just going to say our favorite foods one at a time and we'll take turns. And the only rule is that you can't say something that's already been said. So I'll go and you can just, there's no order. So we'll just take turns. You can unmute and just say it whenever you want. So um, I'll say sushi. Nice toast. Tacos. Seafood. Pasta. Um, I'd say shakes. fresh, yeah, fresh fruits directly plucked from the trees, like, oh, plants, like, very fresh. Um, mac and cheese. Lasagna. Uh, pizza. Great. Let's switch to favorite musicians. The Beatles. Lady Gaga. Kip Winger. Michael Jackson. R.E.M. The Foo Fighters. <laughs> Lord. Ian Ramon. Uh, Hippocampus. Ben Folds. Indigo Girls. Okay, uh, let's do things that are blue. Sky. Sky for me too. <laughs> Jeans. Blueberries. Ocean. Eyes. Today, my shirt. <laughs> Those like surgical masks. <laughs> Swimming pool. Oh, my dress. I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> my pen. Okay, cool. Cookie monster. Yeah, nice. Um, Okay, so we're gonna keep this going. We're just gonna switch it up a little bit. So we're gonna take turns where we're doing a category, but it's gonna change. This version is called five things. So you're gonna say five things out of a specific category, and then you're gonna pick someone else and give them a different category. Okay, so I'm gonna pick Matthew, and I'm going to say, Matthew, what are five dog breeds? Oh my gosh, I picked the wrong life to be a cat person. Okay, um, <laughs> say, okay, golden retriever, say Dalmatians, okay. two, Corgis, I don't know if that's a breed, but that's a dog, three. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, I literally... Hmm. It's okay. You well, five, and huskies. Four, five. That's five things. There Perfect. we go. <laughs> so you're going to pick a category, and it could be like breakfast cereals or, you know, women's clothing lines. So pick whatever you want and pick a person. Okay. I'm thinking we'll do movie titles, and I'm going to pick Marissa. Okay, movie titles. Um, Back to the Future. One. Suddenly I can't think of any movies. <laughs> um, the Godfather. Two. Fast and Furious. Three. Um, Avengers. Four. And Little Mermaid. Five. Yay, that's five Yay. things. All right. Um, and I'll pick for the next category. I'll do types of foods. Does that work or should I pick something else? Types of foods? Yeah, you're okay. good. Who do you want to do it? Um, I'll pick Otter to do that. 
Uh, pasta food. Pasta food. Um, pasta. One. Uh, seafood. Two. Uh, grains. Three. Fruits. Four. Um, no shake. <laughs> five. That's five things. Um, I'll do fast food restaurants and I'll pick Jackie. Nice. Okay. Fast food restaurants. Arby's. One. Uh, Wendy's. Two. McDonald's. Three. Um, Taco Bell. Four. Um, KFC, I guess. Five. That's five things. Okay. So um, I'm going to pick TV shows. And um, who do I... Who am I going to go after? Let's see. Um, Beth. Nice. I Dream of Jeannie. One. Gilligan's nice. Island. Two. The Honeymooners. Three. <laughs> um, Mary Tyrell Moore Show. Four. And Andy Griffith. <laughs> five. Those are those five are, things. Those are the great shows. The category was was not shows before yeah. 1970. Okay. <laughs> I did not specify, but she picked great shows. <laughs> All right. Ben. All right. Five genres of music, and I will pick Emily. Um. Okay. Uh, we have pop, hip hop, One, two, country, three, uh, rock, four. Um, uh, jazz. <laughs> okay. Yay! Five things. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, who has not gone yet? Uh, Abdul. I think. Yep. Oh, okay. What do you want him to oh, do? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go. Cities of the world. Okay. Nice. Uh, Chicago. Uh, Cincinnati, Tampa, Two, three, um, London, four, um, Sydney. Five, that's five things. Okay, just give us a little wave if you haven't gone yet. Laura, Kathy, okay. Okay, I'll pick Laura and um, let's do types of sports. Yay. Basketball, football, soccer, track and field. Four. Football. Five. Five things. Uh, so I'm laughing because I don't know if any of you all, my kids love watching Family Feud. So this is like my <laughs> dream is our dream yeah. to be on Family Feud. So I was kind of laughing when I'm, Abdul was going because, of course, in my head, I was like, well, that's a very interesting ones that he's picking because I'm like, I wonder what the five cities that people would pick would be. Yeah, yeah. Feud. Anyway, <laughs> um, so speaking of family feud, I guess my five would be game shows. So um, I'm going to pick Kathy. <laughs> this is so unfair, Laura. You were a yeah. sports writer, so I <laughs> think you got sports. <laughs> Here we go, Kathy. You can do uh, this. Wait, what was that? I'm sorry. It was, what was the topic? Game shows. Game shows. Oh, game shows. oh my gosh. Um, Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy. One, two. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Kathy, you have to say Hollywood Squares given the medium. Oh, Hollywood Squares. <laughs> Three. I never watched that. Um, I don't even know what way I need two more. Um, the love connection with Chuck Waller. Four. Totally dating myself. And um, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Let's see. I'm totally stumped. I don't watch game shows. Um, well, I just said Family Feud, so. 
Vanna, what about Vanna White? <laughs> Yay, she did it. Okay, did anyone else, uh, we can play a different game. Did anyone else not go that really wants to go? I don't want to leave anyone out. Okay. Um, so for this one, we are going to pick six people. So I need six volunteers. Just raise your hand. Kraki, Emily, Beth, Emily. I'm gonna write this down. Did I say it right, Kraki? Okay, cool. Okay, so Kraki, you're one. Beth, you're two. Emily, N, you're three. Okay. Uh, Emily G, you're one. A day of cool. five, you're two. Yeah. Who? Ade. Ade. Okay, thank you. Ade, you're two. And I need one more. Yay, Matthew. Okay, so this is called dictionary, okay? So, Procky, you're gonna make up a word. Beth, you're gonna define that word. And Emily N, you're gonna use that word in a sentence. Ready? Yeah, so I have to make up a word like just like that or it should be an actual word? No, it's a fake new word. Vulturous. Well, just Vultures, something sounds good. Vulture and vultures. Yeah, vultures. Okay, perfect. Spell, I'll try to spell it also. No, that's good. <laughs> The, the sound that soggy shoes make. Yes, that's right, Beth. Thank you. And Emily N. You're going to use it in a sentence. You're muted. Hold on. You can do it. I heard bumptiousness in the morning when it was raining. Yay, that's perfect. Great job. Okay, Emily G, you're gonna make up a word. Um, oh gosh, okay. <laughs> uh, I want to start with a schma, I don't know why. Uh, Shma is great. Shma. Yeah, it's just shma. That's the word. Okay. <laughs> okay, Ade, what does shma mean again? Shma well, means so far loudly. Yeah, that's right. I remember that now. Matthew, can you use that in a sentence? Um. I tried to be smooth on the dance floor, but I just ended up schmying all over the place. Yeah, I remember that. That yeah. was embarrassing. Uh, great job. Uh, let's pick three more. Um, Indu, is that how you say it? What is the word you were telling me about the other day? Betar. Betar? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, Abdul, what does that mean again? Um, let's see. Uh, when you pass by someone without saying hi. Oh, yeah. And Marissa, can you use that in a sentence? Yeah. Um, I saw my teacher at the grocery store and made sure to bata her. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Um, Jackie, what's that word? That word was, <laughs> I keep <laughs> saying a word and it's like, it's an actual word. I'm just messing with it. Um, let's see, it's, I think it was, um, 
curd. No. Curd, yeah. No curd, yeah. Curd, yeah. Um, Ajith, are you with us? Oh man, I'm on the spot now. Yeah, yeah. What is <laughs> curd? What is curd meeting in? Uh, curd is um. Uh that uh foamy stuff on the seashore oh yeah that's right um and laura can you use that in a sentence my kids wanted to play on the beach but there was a lot of curd and i was worried that there was some flesh eating algae in there oh yeah that's right good job everybody so let's take a minute to reflect how how does this feel when you when you get that pressure moment and you're like I can't think of anything my brain shut down and it made me think of like for instance words that not have one meaning but two meanings and several spellings but it, I'm gonna just use it it's a whatever gotta own it but yeah you just kind of yeah yeah, and so what I think like building trust with yourself that mm -hmm. everyone did think of something to say, you know, and like we we saw, you know, multiple people have that moment where you're like, Ugh, and then they took a breath and they were able to come up with something like you will think of something um, trust is behavior times time so the more times that we practice these things like we can develop that trust with ourselves that when we are put on the spot or we're in a moment like we know that we will be able to come through for ourselves anyone else have any reflections or something that came up for them I feel like as soon as the question is asked, there's like a mental clock, which is counting down. And like the more time passes, the more I'm pressured to not think of something else and just say what's in my head. Yeah. Isn't it interesting how like in our society, it's, it's very um, uncomfortable to have like a moment of silence and just like a small pause. And really like if we can become comfortable being uncomfortable, like that will help us a lot to get through those moments. Like if I'm comfortable in a the pause, then you guys are gonna be comfortable. You know, it's really the fact that I'm uncomfortable with myself in the pause, you know? Anybody else? there's anxiety about picking a good response like for all these games like it's not necessarily just saying something but you want it to be clever or, or funny or something and that's the hard part I think yeah I want my made up fake word to be the best <laughs> you know what I mean and I think that's so true how we all like we put all this pressure on ourselves. that's exactly what I was talking about with the demand being internal it's like not only do I need to come up with something it needs to be the best made up word you know and it's like where is that coming from that really adds tension onto ourselves and the tension that's already there and it just kind of builds within ourselves that's a good point okay so before we kind of wind down i want to do one thing that we're all going to collaborate as a group so you all know how to change uh your name right i'm assuming in zoom so I'm gonna give us an order, okay? So if you can just put like a number next to your name. So Ade, you're one, Kathy, you're two, Laura, you're three, Jackie, you're four, Matthew, you're five, Marissa, you're six, Emily, G, you're seven, Indu, you're eight, 
Beth, you're nine. Procky, you're 10. Abdul, you're 11. Emily N, you're 12. Ajit, you're 13. I'm 14. Everybody get it? Actually, I'm unfamiliar with changing my name. Um, let me. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, let me see if. Oh, I can there do it is. It. I see it. Rename. Okay, you got it. Yeah, you should be able to rename. You got it. Perfect. So let's see. Beth, okay, you should, got it. Should we then, uh, erase our name completely and just have the number? It's okay either way. Oh. It's fine. Yeah. Um, are we trying to show so, up in order or something or just? We're going to do something in an order. So as long as you know who you're before and who you're after, you should be good. Um, the only one that I think I'm going to change someone's here. Okay. Cool. So we're going to tell a story as a group. Okay. And we're going to do it one word at a time. So um, everyone gets one word. You're going to follow the person before you. And um, other than that, we're just going to let it go where it wants to go. So before we start, let's get a genre. What do we want our story to be like? Romance or horror or? Horror. <laughs> horror? Okay, horror. Um, and then can we get a title from someone else of this horror story? I went to my final without going to one class all semester. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's really scary. Okay, so uh, number one, you're going to start. Did you say something? Oh, yeah, I said I. I, okay. Stopped. I'm sorry, I couldn't understand what she said. I said I stop. I stopped. Oh, okay. I stopped walking. Two. My. Class. Class. I stopped walking to my last class. Is that right? Okay. Midnight. Because I didn't have. Okay, I stopped walking to my last class midnight because I didn't have. Okay. I'm two what was the last word time two number one oh eat eat any practice because i didn't have time to eat any cactus is that right I said practice, but I <laughs> okay. <didn't>. Practice, <laughs> practice. Uh, meal, <laughs> practice meal. Or dinner. So nothing was. Uh, Abdul, can you go? We lost number 10. Uh, able. Two. Two. Yeah. Satisfy. Me. The end. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very scary story. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for getting together. I'm going to drop my contact info in the chat if you are interested in therapy, coaching, improv, or have questions. It was fun to get together today. Thank you so much, Lindsay. This is fun. And I think we should have you back when we can do this again in person. In person would be great. Thank you for having me for sure.
Although, hey, this worked more better than most Zoom activities I've ever seen. So kudos to all of you for your participation and for you, Lindsay. So thank you so much, everyone.